Hello everyone and welcome back to Everyday Husband Quotes, the channel for marriage advice, marriage entertainment, and everything else, marriage. Hey, hey guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. What's up? How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? Did y'all enjoy the show last night? I got some questions on here. Let me see what y'all ask him. Oh, I don't know what that is, child. That's in another language. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> where y'all at this morning? Tell me where y'all coming from. Oh, see, Chi-Town, that's where my manager is from, honey. And I'm just saying, um, I've been out here working. She's been working me all week. But it's been a blessed and a wonderful week for sure. But we were yesterday in the studio finishing up on some new music, some other music besides what y'all already have heard. And I was about to do what I wanted to do the first time. Just know I was like, I'm about to go forget this. <laughs> I tell you what, being in the studio and recording and just being a singer, there's two different things. Know that for sure. It's two different things. How long? Okay, Pennsylvania, DC, Dallas. Oh, Dallas, okay. Made me think about Texas, Houston, Texas. Hope y'all are good out there starting to um, get some things back together. I know it's been just a total tragedy, man. For real. Oh, Royal J, how were you able to stay calm during the scene at the graduation party? Um, Honestly, I just really like... I don't know, I just try to stay in my peaceful state and let nothing really disturb that as best as I can. So, um, yeah, and that's just what it is. Um, it was a lot going on, a lot happened, of course. I think some things ended up being bigger than expected or whatever, I don't know, but I try, like if it's BS, I try to be like, bye and avoid period but good question so i said are you dating i feel like i'm dating myself okay i feel like i am learning me um really spending a lot of time doing the things that will benefit me and take me um catapult me to the next level in my life and my career so yeah i feel like i'm dating male like i got married when i was 22 um and so I'm really just, you know, learning adult melody, so to speak. Because, I mean, at 22, you still kind of baby. I say that now. Back then, honey, you thought you was grown. Like, ah. No, you still kind of baby, okay? So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm dating myself. Okay, someone said, good question. Were you emotional during the pumpkin scene with your friend? Hearing your kids discuss their feelings? Um, that was an emotional piece for me. Really, my kids are about the only thing that can make me kind of tear up right now, period. And even then, like, when it deals with my kids, that's what, um, you know, affects me the most. But I love, um, I like to let my kids express themselves and how they feel. And I think some of that comes from how I was raised and how I was brought up. So my mom was never that mom to say, you do what I said, do because I said it. She was not that kind of mom. Like, if she wanted me to do something or express how she felt about something, she would actually allow me to express it, express how I felt. Didn't mean I was going to sway her one way or the other, but she never shut me down from thinking and from being able to express, which is probably why I'm so expressive now. She never was that kind of parent, like, you just do it because I said you do it. Um, so I think that's why I'm that way with my kids because I feel like it really benefited me. Um, so I like for them to be able to express themselves, how they're feeling. And what I really hope more than anything, um, cause y'all know I'm always gonna be transparent and definitely keep it real. Hold on. But what I really hope that people get, y'all know I love being transparent and authentic. I really hope people pull from um, that scene and I hope that they feel like, you know what? Wow. You know, just seeing how it affects the kids. You guys have seen how it affects business. You've seen how infidelity, cheating, 
you know, pretty much not doing right by your marriage affects the wife, how it affects the husband, how it affects business, how it affects friendships. But let's not forget the most important, which are the babies. And if anybody's like people walk around and I think psych psycholo psychologically, they think like the kids are right, they ain't, you know, they're they too young or they don't know. The kids understand what's going on. And they're, they're in that same house with you and your husband or your wife. They see here and they understand what's going on. So I hope more than anything, like if you're a dude and you out here cheating or you thinking about cheating, I hope you watched that episode last night and was like, man, forget this. It ain't even worth it. Or if you are a woman, a wife, and you cheating or you thinking about cheating, I hope you watched that scene last night and was like, dang, the kids, shit, it ain't even worth it. I hope that's what you guys, I love for everything to be a learning experience. If it ain't teaching nothing, it's wasting my time. So hopefully last night's episode, the, the you know, kids are going to be kids. They're going to say whatever they want to say and what comes out their mouth. But that's the purest form of truth and the purest form of reality out the mouth of babes. Okay. So what I hope more than anything is that y'all saw that. And that y'all change some stuff if you need to change it before it's too late because they are affected. Mar Malia, boss baby, so funny. When she said ice cream boy, I thought that was hilarious. I said, I don't even remember. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't be remembering what scenes, what happened most of the time, nothing. But when she said that, I couldn't help but start laughing. But that was a kid. Like, that's her just being a kid. Um, so y'all heard what it is, you know. So I would plea with you and encourage, like, if you ain't on point in your marriage or whatever, and y'all have kids together, watch that episode again. If that don't tug at your heart and make you feel like, man, it ain't worth it, then I don't know what it is. I can still remember. I'll never forget. And this was like, um, the cameras weren't rolling or anything like that, but um, Chris Fletcher and his wife, Miss Nell, um, they really came into our lives and really just started pouring into us a lot and sharing experiences, you know, that they'd had and sharing with us how it affected their children. Like, hey, y'all don't, you know, you don't want to go this route. You don't want to do this because this is how it affects the kids. And this was probably like maybe two years ago, mm -hmm, about two years ago. And, um, you know, so I'll say God definitely sent some people, um, our way who were just real straight up and who'd already been in the situ kind of situations that we were in before who were just real and authentic and shared their experience so can't nobody can never say they didn't know any better or you know it isn't it would ain't talked about there was definitely some people sent our way to kind of show us futuristically what things could look like if we continued to travel down the road we were on and the way we were going but that don't mean everybody listen. Some folks still think they know it. Okay, cool, cool. There we go. Some people still think they know everything and, you know, it is what it is. Everybody is not open and to instruction or wisdom. Okay, this is a good question. Somebody said, do you and Kimmy speak regularly now? So Kimmy and I, like, we text each other here and there. She may reach out, like, if it's, when it's cold. Hey, hope y'all good over there, whatever. But, um, yeah. So Kimmy and I... Um, we do have, like, we talked on the phone, I think, last week. So, we, Kimmy and I are in a good spot. I mean, honestly, to be real, me and Kimmy never really had an issue for real, for real. Um, just Kimmy and I are just very strong personalities and very vocal and mean what we say and say what we mean. Sometimes they cause people to bump heads or just for there to be a little bit of something. But in terms of her ever doing anything to me or me ever doing anything to her, no, we never, we never had a problem like that for real. I hope that you guys, all right, more than anything too, I hope that, you know, you guys are able to pull from no matter the fact that no matter what you're going through, how many curveballs life is throwing your way or whatever's going on, that you just continue to remain focused, stay strong, keep going after your dreams. Don't allow anybody to deter you from your purpose. Whenever things are coming against you while you're working towards your purpose in life, it's not for you. Um, and I'll say this, I say this all the time, nothing trumps God. 
nothing trumps what God wants me to do. Nothing trumps my purpose, nothing. Because then that's like me saying you're bigger than God or this situation is bigger than God and nothing is. So, you know, I would encourage you guys, no matter what, to always keep pushing forward. Um, Press past the pain, whatever that pain is, whoever it's coming from, press past the pain. Keep going after your goals, your dreams. Um, like, you know, some days I had my moments when I maybe wasn't didn't want to go as hard. What I had to learn to do was take those moments, breathe a little bit, um, and then get back up and keep going. Now, I've always been a person who's worked hard. I've always been a person who has been a go-getter. I've always been a person to juggle mul- multiple things at one time. I can multitask very well. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let nobody ever make you feel like there's something wrong with that because it's not. Okay? And like I said, always work towards your purpose, period. Because what? Nothing trumps God, period. It's just like you being married and your husband saying to you, hey, God told me, um, God told me I need to do X, Y, and Z. Or God told me that this needs to be our next move in terms of X, Y, and Z. And you try to come along and tell your husband or your wife, yeah, we ain't about to do that. Oh, we ain't going to do that. No, you missed God on that. Man, you better do what God told you to do. Shoot. Nothing trumps God. Nobody trumps God. (laughs) Period. That's what we get mixed up sometimes. We feel like we own people. Once you get that title, like you feel like, you know, you own them or they own you and they got to do everything you want them to do. No, that's not how it's supposed to go. God should still be in control and should still be number one. Period. Somebody said, I love how your son articulated his feelings. It says a lot about how you're raising him. So yeah, our kids, honestly, they're very articulate. They're very vocal, very expressive, creative, talented. Like they are all of those things. I mean, at the end of the day, they've been around, you know, entrepreneurial parents all their lives. So that's all they hear. All they know is being a boss. And so they all kind of have that trait. Um, But my son, you know, he's the only boy. And so sometimes I feel like, you know, he just takes on that responsibility. Like he's the person, he'll want to go out there and crank my car up um, in the mornings to make sure it's warm before we get ready to leave. You know what I mean? Um, To go to school or whatever. He's the one who's going to take the trash out. He's always been the one to be like, Mom, you good? Are you okay? Um, And I think I've expressed that a lot in my um, interviews. He's just, he's that kid. He's that kind of kid. So we have definitely raised him um, in a good way and will continue to do so. Now, I ain't gonna be, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. When they was out of school for that, um, for the weather, they was home with me every day, all day. I was like, whoo, this is a lot. Because I feel like every five minutes, I was saying, stop, don't hit her, don't push him. Now, y'all, stop. Why are you crying? It was a lot. But let me tell you what I said in that moment when I started feeling myself. After a few days, I started feeling my patience leaving a little bit. I was like, I'm not about to stop getting onto them because eventually it's going to click in. And I hope that when they become adults and they're fully grown men and women or men and women, I hope that they feel like, I do this because my mama always stayed on me to pick up after myself. I keep it clean around my house because my mama always, I don't ever want to be the parent who stopped because I got tired. You know what I'm saying? So I stopped discipline because I'm tired. And then my kids grow up and they ain't on point with, you know, keeping things in order, keeping things clean. I don't want that for them. I want them to be like, yeah, I do. I keep my house clean. My mom, you know, she always stayed on me. My dad always stayed on me about this, stayed on me about that. So I'm not about to get tired, even though I was kind of feeling that. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, I'm about to let these kids do what they want to do. I'm over yelling and fussing right now. But no, um, I want them to grow up being, you know, it's our job as parents. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what I give someone who's going through a breakup. Okay. I mean, first off, like, don't look at it as a loss for you. Be confident enough in who you are and what you bring to the table to know that, you know, if you bring a lot to the table, it's their loss. So know that people come in your life certain times for a certain season and a certain reason doesn't mean that it's supposed to be forever. 
So be okay with that too. Like, it's okay. Um, life goes on, know that. Um, keep your head up, allow yourself to feel, you know what I mean? Feel, then move on, okay? Um, and focus on positive things. Like focus on the positive people in your life, hang out with your girls, kick it with your family, your girlfriends, um, surround yourself with those people who truly care about you. Cause that's what I did. And I mean, it was wonderful. There are people, let me tell y'all something. So when you get in relationships, sometimes you don't get to, you know, you spend the time with that significant other. So you may not spend as much time with certain people that you used to kick it with. And what I have been enjoying is just back kicking it with my girlfriends. Like my college roommate, Brittany, we've been friends since we were roommates in college and we've been kicking it, hanging out, doing all of that. And it's been fun, laughing, cutting up. Like you gotta have that energy around you that's gonna keep you pushing and keep you going. Um, because breakups, I mean, yeah, they're tough, especially if you love the person or cared about them a whole lot. So it is tough. You're going to have moments and times when you're going to be like, man, I miss them or dang, memories, all of that. But that doesn't mean that's meant for you to reach out to them and call them, check on them and see how they're doing necessarily. Um, so um, you just have to keep pushing and look past, press past the pain. That's what I would say. Press past the pain, period. Let's see. I went through infidelity for 12 years and I rekindled. You don't miss around no more. He chose me and Martell chooses you. If you watched the episode last night and you still talking about Martell. Okay, so let's talk about this. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to address this, period. Um, you can't even. It's not your you grandmother. It's your grandmother. Get the English right before you try to be funny. But anyway, somebody else say I went through infidelity for 12 years and I reached. I, I rekindled, he he don't mess around no more. He chose me and Martell chooses you, babe. Here's the thing. And I'm gonna address this because people come into my DMs about stuff like this too, the saying stuff like this. Don't be a person who's sitting around waiting for somebody to choose you, okay? Or for somebody to wake up and know that you the shit, or you the one. Don't be sitting around waiting for that. Like y'all, not some of y'all be in my DMs like, oh, you know, he knows he's messed up. He know, he knows, you know, this, this, and this. I don't care what he know. I wasn't sitting around waiting for him to come to the realization of what I bring to the table. Like, stop putting that narrative like we gotta be, oh God, it hurts my nerves. Like, stop putting out the narrative that we got to be sitting around waiting for these men to wake up. Because we don't. <laughs> Shoot. It's okay to move on. And y'all be killing me with that. Like, so please stop. Okay. He know, oh, he wants you back. I can see it in his face. I don't care if he wants me back. It's not about when you're, when you decide to walk away from somebody, it ain't about they, their, their feelings. Okay. It's not about, it's about what do you want. I don't have to just move because somebody is acting like they want me back. So I gotta go back. No, no, you don't walk away. At least I didn't, you don't walk away sitting around hoping somebody's gonna wake up and have an epiphany. And now because they want you back, you should be there. Miss me with that. Y'all might as well stop coming to my DM with that, period. Okay, it's funny though, for real, but no, no. Okay, now that I've adjusted, I feel better. Okay, somebody said, how do I submit submit music to you? So you can um, email my manager, because I had somebody actually yesterday, I sent them the email too, because they had the same question. Well, they want me to do um, a, part in their, a part in their song or something. But anyway, you can email my manager, 